For both discrete and continuous random variables, we can define the expectation operator E. The expectation of a function G of a random variable, so the expectation of G of a random variable X, is defined as a sum if X is discrete or as an integral as an integral if S, x is continuous. In the discrete case, we evaluate the function g on every possible value x could take and weight it by the probability that x is actually little x. So that is a weighted average. Similarly, in the continuous case, we evaluate g on every value x can take and weight it by the probability density function. Many special choices for G can be made, and I have a few special cases here which are very important. So the first case, the first special case is called the mean. So that is the expectation of X. So here the function G is simply X. So G of X is X. And it's so important that we often denote it by mu. Uh, so mu is equal to expectation of X. That is the mean of x. Similarly, we can define the variance of x. That is the expectation of x minus its mean to the square. So the deviation from the mean squared. This is denoted by sigma square or variance var of x. Well, that is the definition expectation operator of x minus mu to the square. The mean and the variance are also linked to another entity called the mean square or the second moment. And this is the expectation of x squared. So that is simply e of x to the square, expectation of x squared. And it's easy to show that the mean square is linked to the variance and the mean like, uh, like so. So the expectation of x squared, the mean square, is equal to the variance plus the squared mean. That gives us a, a second way to compute the variance or to define the variance. In this case we can write that the variance is actually equal to the mean square of x minus the squared mean of x. To give you a feel for how we can compute the mean and variance and mean square of a random variable, I'll now show an example. We will consider now an example of a random variable that is a uniform random variable that is uniform in the interval 0, 2. So if we should, we can draw the PDF, that is P of X here, and it's 0 outside an interval between 0 and 2 and inside here it is 1 half so that is value of 1 half and 0 again from there so the mean of x is the expectation of x in this case because x is continuous the mean is an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of x times p of x, which in our case here is an integral from 0 to 2 of x times 1 half, because the probability density is 1 half everywhere in that interval. And if you carry out that integral, you get 1. You can also compute the mean square very easily. So the mean square, that is the mean, the expectation of the square, So the integral of x squared weighted by the probability density function, which is again an integral from 0 to 2 of x to the square, 1 half dx, which if you compute this will give you 4 third. Now by the relation we have from before, you can write the variance for x as the mean square 
minus the squared mean. So in this case here, that gives you 4 third minus 1, which is 1 third. So you see here how sometimes it's easier to compute the mean square and the mean to get the variance than it would be to compute the variance directly by the definition. This definition of the expectation gives the expectation operator some extraordinary properties. The most extraordinary one here is that the expectation is a linear operator. What does that mean? It means two things. Firstly, if you take a sum of two or more uh, functions of random variables, you can split the expectation of these into expectations of each of them and then just sum them up. So the expectation of g1 of x plus g2 of x is actually just the expectation of g1 plus the expectation of g2. Secondly, if you scale a function by a constant a, so the expectation of a times g of x, so the scale g of x, is simply a times the expectation of g of x. So these two here are the two conditions for linearity. This holds both in the discrete and in the continuous case, and actually it holds regardless uh, of the properties of these two functions here. The fact that expectation is a linear operator comes in handy when doing computations with the expectation. So suppose, for instance, that you want to do the expectation of some complicated function, so a polynomial, say, 5x squared plus 4, 4x minus 2, say, by the first uh, by the first line up here, we would easily say we can just split this expectation into several. So e of 5x squared plus 4x, uh, e of 4x minus or plus 2, e of minus 2. By the second property here we can pull out all the constants so 5 goes out and we have we are left with the mean square of x plus 4 times the mean of x plus the mean of a constant with minus which is minus 2 here so the mean of the constant is the constant itself so this will give us minus 2 So in this case, if we know the mean square and the mean of x, we would actually know the value of this expe uh, expectation of this complicated expression. The fact that the expectation is a linear operator is in sharp contrast to the fact that the variance is not a linear operator. So in fact, if we take the variance of a times x, it is not just a variance a times the variance of x, but it's a squared times the variance of x. You should try to show this fact directly from the definition of the variance. You insert, you compute simply the variance of a times x. This also has a very important special case that is the variance of minus x. That is obviously the variance of minus 1 times x. And by the, this rule up here, it should be minus 1 to the square times the variance of x, which is nothing but the variance of x. If now the variance was really a linear operator, you would have minus the variance of x, but it isn't. It's also possible to show that the variance of x plus x so the variance of 2x is just 4 times the variance of x. That is because 2 goes out squared. So it's very clear that the variance is not a linear operator.